Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch and uh, yeah, some well overdue announcement coming out from the land of Unity today. And I'm going to start things off with a question. How many employees do you think there are at Unity right now? Is it 500, 600, 800? Nope. It's 2,000. There are 2,000 employees currently employed by Unity Technologies. And I think something like 850 plus of those are directly on the Unity product team. That is adding and contributing features to the Unity game engine. Now, a second question. How many of those developers are working on Train in the game engine? You know, so like the landscape system, all that stuff. How many employees are working on that? None. There are zero employees working on Train at Unity. This has been one of the most neglected areas of development in Unity for ages, but that has finally changed. In Unity 2018.3, which is actually the current beta version, so coming soon to 2018.3, Train is getting some love. What we saw here is we now have a team dedicated to Train, and our initial efforts will soon be publicly available. Uh, the update will feature improved tools, performance by taking better advantage of the GPU. It also adds support for HD and light lightweight render pipelines while being backward compatible with the built-in pipeline in the existing Unity terrain system. So the Unity terrain system has been stagnant for years and years and years and years and finally there is a team working on it. And this actually kind of shocks me a bit because the terrain system is often what actually, it's the eye candy of a game engine. This is why so many people look at Cry, uh, the Cry engine and go, holy, this thing is beautiful. And it's kind of been left to third party tools like Gaia in the Unity ecosystem to make the train look good. So what exactly are they adding? So keep in mind, again, this isn't available yet. This is more of a, hey guys, we're working on this. And that's good to hear. It's, it's nice that they are putting development focus on this kind of a tool. But what is actually coming in this 2018.3 update coming up? Uh, well, we're seeing uh, performance improvements. So we said added GPU instance render path for train, in most cases yielding a dramatic reduction in the number of draw calls issued. Many of our tests saw more than a 50% reduction in CPU cost. Uh, you can choose this new render path by enabling draw instance in the train settings. Now, the basically draw call almost always has a direct correlation to frame rate. So you should see, you know, 25 to 50% improvements in frame rate when dealing with train. Um, a little bit of a more of a detail on how it's actually implemented it. And also says as a nice side effect, it also improves our load times. Uh, not only can we skip building all of those custom meshes, we can also use the GPU to build the base map, pre-blended LOD texture. Uh, the GPU is much faster at this kind of thing. This also means that if you have your own custom terrain shader, you can now override the build base map shader and generate matching base map LOD texture. So this basically means in a nutshell, less draw calls, um, more processing on the GPU as opposed to the CPU, and faster loading types. All wins basically across the board. Now they're also doing visual train and uh, train visual improvements. So instancing also improves the appearance of train normals. We've decoupled the train mesh normals from the geometry by storing them in normal map textures that is generated from the height map and sampled in the pixel shader. This means that the normals are independent of the mesh LOD level. Consequently, you can increase the pixel error rate to decrease the vertex cost with fewer artifacts. We also developed this train shader for both the HD and lightweight render pipelines with support for instance rendering. Uh, the HD shader was further enhanced to support per pixel uh, normal and numerous new features such as height and density blend modes, normal scaling, texture controlled surface metalness and smoothness. The HD train render uh, train shader is limited to a single pass, but it does support a blending of up to eight train layers in one pass. <sighs> And then finally, they are adding scriptable tools to the terrain side of things. So uh, on the editor side, we've exposed a script API for building your own custom terrain tools along with a suite of utility functions that you can use to easily implement seamless cross tile sculpting and painting operations on the GPU. The new terrain API includes the terrain paint tool, a base class for applying terrain tool, uh, ah, sorry, a base class for terrain tools and terrain paint utility containing utility functions for modifying terrain data. So in as essence, it also means that plugins such as Gaia that work with the train system have more data available to them, more options and more access to the GPU. So we should see better uh, train tools coming. We've begun experimenting with brush features such as brush rotation and randomization and more advanced painting tools like height map and mesh stamping clone brushes and more. These painting tools currently are not in 2018.3, but they are coming soon. Keep an eye out for our beta page. Uh, and then finally, we have multiple train support. 
Uh, this has made it easier to work with multiple terrain tiles. Aside from seamless painting between terrain, you can now manage the connection between neighboring terrains automatically. Previously, this required writing a script to connect neighbors manually. Enable autocorrect in the terrain system, and the terrain will automatically connect to its neighbors with the same grouping ID. Nice stuff. So uh, we're also working to make resizing and resolution changes less destructive. In 2018.3, the height map and splat map will resample when you change the resolution instead of the previous behavior of clearing the data and losing all of your work. We are working towards improving all resizing operations in the near future. Plus, they have added, I got to stop saying it will end last because there's a, and more. Hey, wait, there's more. Uh, new asset types. In order to simplify workflow, we also created two new train related asset types, the train layer asset and the brush asset. The train layer lets us define train material independent of train objects so we can easily track the same material across multiple trains. This helps with seamless painting and material modification. We also extended the train layer asset to support mask map textures, which can be used for arbitrary shading purposes. And a script interface to provide shader independent custom GUI for the train layer asset. The brush represents the GPU brush shapes used by the painting and sculpting tools. They are now defined by a texture and a radial falloff curve. This makes it much easier to create and tweak brush shapes, which previously required dropping arcanely crafted image files into a specially named folder. We also add a support for R16 texture formats, a single channel 16-bit format to Unity. This allows us to avoid 8-bit quantization on our brush shapes, which can cause undesirable terracing, terracing effects if used in a height map stamp. There you go. Our training team is just getting started. Please send us feedback on the world building forum. So that is a pretty big development, actually. It's, it's nice to see that Unity Terrain is finally going to get some love. I guess it hasn't been updated in, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Did, did Unity 5 even get any updates to the terrain system? I know they added some things like, you know, um, scriptable pipeline rendering for train, but that's kind of about it. So it's nice to see this new functionality coming in. It's going to make the marketplace a little bit less useful, uh, but uh, for the majority of developers, hey, that's awesome. So uh, a long overdue announcement. It's not quite here yet, so I can't actually show you it in action. Uh, stay tuned on their beta page for this stuff to be added, uh, but definitely a move in the right direction. So if you are a Unity developer, well, good news. The train system in Unity is going to get a whole lot nicer to work with. It a whole lot more powerful and a whole lot more efficient on your CPU and GPU. So basically win, win and win. I like the way that Unity is developing these days. They are being very responsive and they are finally addressing these, these core concerns that have been neglected for a very, very long time. So anyways, that is it. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate anything because there's nothing to demonstrate yet, but I still figure this one is definitely exciting enough to share it. So if you are a Unity developer and especially if you are working with a train system, hey, Christmas just came a little bit early. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.